If you're like me, you've come across the open source library, Whisper C++, and are interested in understanding how it works and how you can use it in your own projects. I first came across the library about two months ago when I was looking for a solution to do audio transcription in an iOS app I'm working on. And I've been using this library ever since. In this video, I wanna give you an overview of what Whisper C++ is, why it matters, and how it works by looking at the code and running the Swift UI sample app that's included in the repo. To understand what Whisper C++ is, we first have to understand what Whisper is. And Whisper is a general purpose speech recognition model that was open sourced by OpenAI last year. And this model is capable of doing speech processing tasks such as multilingual speech recognition, speech translation, spoken language identification, and voice activity detection. And importantly, this model is implemented using Python and PyTorch. And this is important because Whisper C++ is the adaptation of OpenAI's implementation in C++. And it was written by Georgi Gurganov. Whisper C++ matters because it's super lightweight, it doesn't have any dependencies, and because it's written in C++, it can run on a lot more platforms than OpenAI's Whisper model can. For example, in my case, wanting to run it on iOS, I wasn't able to do that with OpenAI's open source implementation, but with Whisper C++, I can. And other platforms that you can run Whisper C++ on are macOS, iOS, Android, Linux, WebAssembly, Windows, and Raspberry Pi. And to illustrate how compact the implementation by Georgi is, is that it's all contained within two source files. The tensor operations are in ggml.c and the transformer inference is in whisper.cpp. Now, before we take a look at the source code, I just wanna mention that I'm a software developer not an expert in AI models or transformers. And so this code exploration we're about to do is meant to be a learning exercise for both you and me. Before we actually look at the source code, let us run the Swift UI sample app that's included in the repo. So I'm running this app in an iPhone simulator right here. And what's about to happen when I tap transcribe is that it's going to take the audio file JFK, which is included here, and it's going to transcribe it for us. So let's do just that. And so my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And as you can see, uh, Whisper successfully transcribed that audio and we see the text displayed in the app right here. So let's get rid of the simulator and dig into the code. All right, good morning. Had to postpone the code walkthrough until this morning. So let's begin. Uh, and let's start in the content view of the Swift UI sample app that we just saw. And we can see that there's a Swift UI button defined right here that has an action which calls this function transcribe sample. And let's tap into that function and we can see that it takes a sample URL, which is a URL to the audio file, which we want to transcribe, which in the case of the demo we just saw is the JFK file in the samples directory right here. So it calls transcribe audio with that URL. And in this function transcribe audio, the first thing I want to highlight is this line right here. Let data equals try read audio samples. And what you should know about this function is that it takes an input, which is that URL and it returns an array of 
floats and exactly understanding the details of how audio is represented digitally is out of scope for this video but just know that uh, this is a digital representation of audio data um, in the form of normalized audio samples, which means that each value uh, in this array is going to be between negative one and one. And so once we have that data, we can pass it to this function right here, um, whisper context at full transcribe with the samples and whisper context is a object um, that basically gets initialized with the model that we want to run and that's defined up here um, because there's a variety of models of various sizes um, and various performances and so it just contains some context. Um, you can actually see up here as well, uh, we have the sample URL defined, which uh, is uh, JFK with the wave extension. But uh, going back down here, once we have that data, we can call await whisper context full transcribe with those audio samples. So let's go into that function and basically we're now uh, in this uh, class called whisper context um, and what this function does is it essentially just sets up a bunch of parameters that we then uh, run our inference with um, you can see that we select a max number of threads uh, which depends on the machine we're running this on um, we're setting a default sampling strategy uh, which is greedy in this case and we're setting a bunch of other flags um, and things such as the language and so at this point uh, we're at the end of the swift code and when we're calling whisper full down here, we're going into C++ land, which is where we're passing a memory address. Um, and if you're just using whisper C++ in your own projects and you don't really care too much about the internal workings of uh, the implementation, uh, you might be able to get away with just leaving it here and understanding the process so far. Okay, so here's a very high level overview of Whisper's architecture. Um, and at the very beginning, the audio samples that we just saw get converted to a logmel spectrogram, which just is an alternative way of representing audio data, which happens to be more suitable for tasks like speech recognition. So that's why that is happening. And then that data gets tokenized and passed to an encoder. Um, and it goes through the encoder stack. And then it, that uh, output goes through the decoder stack. Uh, and at the end of the day, a token is predicted um, for each sort of iteration and eventually that gets converted back to human readable text, which then gets displayed in the UI uh, and gets you know, stored, processed, and sent off elsewhere. And one more thing I wanna highlight is that the input audio is split into 30 second chunks and then processed in those chunks. So even if you have an hour worth of audio data, that doesn't just get processed all at once. Um, it always gets processed in these 30 second chunks. And if you want to learn more about the actual implementation and dive a lot deeper into what's going on, I highly recommend this video by Alexa Gordich um, that just goes through the paper of Whisper and just explains the actual um, machine learning steps in much greater detail. Okay, we're now back in the Swift code and 
let's now see what happens when full transcribe is called. So this function calls another one whisper full with state. And over here, uh, we can see that the first thing that happens is that the log mel spectrogram is produced that we just saw. And once that happens, we auto detect the language that the input audio is spoken on if it's not specified in the parameters explicitly. Then a vector of temperatures gets initialized that will be used in the decoding process. And we allocate some memory uh, for the decoders right here. And then we prepare a prompt. And the prompt is required for the model to know what task to perform. Because the model is capable of doing different things like translation and transcription, um, the parameters with which the model is configured kind, uh, uh, dip, will, will affect the prompt that ultimately gets fed to the model itself. And then right here, we have the main loop. And this is kind of the, the meat of the implementation. And at a high level, what happens is that the encoder is called, then the encoder, uh, then the decoder is called, and then basically the outputs of the decoder, which is uh, a sequence of tokens uh, get ranked in terms of the highest likelihood that the output uh, represents the actual uh, audio data. And so we can see that, uh, yeah, the encoder uh, gets called right here. And then basically we have a for loop iterating over the temperatures. And so uh, starting at the lowest temperature, the encoders will uh, be called. Um, and it also is affected by the sampling strategy, which is chosen. But uh, I'll skim over all of these details uh, right now. And if there's interest in diving deeper into all this, um, please let me know. But I think to gain a high level understanding of what's happening, um, just seeing this uh, is a good starting point. Um, and basically once we iterate over the main loop and we have processed all the data, um, we can go back to uh, our whisper context file and we're able to call the function whisper full and segments. And this function right here uh, basically uh, returns uh, all the results um, that the model produced. And these results are of type uh, whisper segment and it contains a property text, which will actually be the human readable string um, that we can then process. And it contains a uh, timestamp that marks the beginning and a timestamp that marks the end of that particular segment. And it also contains uh, the tokens. Um, and let's just have a quick look at the whisper token data object, uh, which is defined right here. And so uh, there's a token ID, there's a forced timestamp token ID, um, and then there's some data around uh, the probability of the token, the log probability of the token, uh, the probability of the timestamp token, the sum of probabilities of all timestamp tokens, as well as the start time and the end time. And so with all that data, uh, you have a lot of power in your end user application because you can build very customizable experiences 
around that and uh, much more so than actually is uh, possible with any framework that's available to you, particularly on iOS, um, running locally. Because even Apple's uh, first party transcription framework um, doesn't run locally. Uh, at least it doesn't make any guarantees. And you have much less uh, configurability um, of their model and it's likely worse although I haven't actually done any side-by-side -side comparison but um, having gone over all of this I hope that you've gained a better understanding of how Whisper uh, C++ works at a high level and how you might be able to use it and um, I hope you found this useful and if you did I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like uh, and subscribed and let me know if you want me to dive into any other details as it pertains to Whisper C++. One of the things I would like to explore further is optimizing this for um, running on iOS. Right now, what we saw is using just the CPUs and um, not really tapping into any of the specialized hardware and software features that are available uh, on iOS. In particular, I'm talking about CoreML. And I know that Whisper C++ has CoreML support, but I haven't really explored that either yet. So that might be something that's interesting to do in the future. So thanks for watching.